أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اخوتي في الله فاعلم ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد as the brothers announced the title of this talk is prime time prime time in the media is usually used the time the people watching tv most where there are a lot of people a lot of viewers who are watching that particular show so if your show is aired after midnight that is not a prime time but if your show is aired 8 o'clock 9 o'clock that is prime time in islam prime time is when you're young when you're strong when you can do something for yourself and for your deen it's not when you get old and you became very slow and you need to hear the hadith 15 times before you rem you remember you memorize it but prime time is when you're young when you're quick to remember a thing where you're physically strong when you can run around, when you can go hours without food or sleep or rest, this is your prime time. Now what do we use that time for? Do we use it for the sake of Allah? Do we say, this is the best time of my life. I can do anything that I want for this deen. Or do we still, in a state of loss, not knowing what to study, not knowing what to, where to go, playing sports, wasting time in coffee shops, you know, just roaming around aimlessly? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, لا تزول قدما عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربع. Your feet and my feet will not be removed. You will not take any steps forward or backward until you are asked certain questions about your life. عن عمري your lifespan altogether, what did you do with it? What did 
you do it from the day you were, mashallah, capable of understanding between the right and wrong until you died, what have you done with that? And then, in one of the aspects of the hadith, it says, وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَى Now, two questions about your lifespan and about your youthfulness. That time, what have you done with it? Al-Ibla ma fi ma abla means what have you accomplished? The first one says fi ma afna. How did you waste it? How did you use it? How did you, you know, spend that time? But the second question is fi ma abla. What have you accomplished? That? Some of you may say, well, I have PhD on the wall. Others may say, I have very successful business. The third may say, when I travel all around the world. But this is not what you will be asked most. What have you done at that particular time for your deed? What did you do with your life at that particular time? I want to take you on a journey. And I want you to travel with me. I want you to live where you are. Abandon. Forget that you're in this misted, misted green lane. And let us, let us all magically travel through time. And imagine that you are in the masjid of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa inside of the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the masjid is packed. And then this man, he walked to the masjid. And you can see this man has been traveling for the longest time. He's very tired. Dusty beard. Simba outfit, unkept hair, Simba sandals. And this man walks into the masjid and the people start talking about the man who walked in. And they say, this is Aba Qudamati Shami. And everybody loved the halaqat. And everybody loved their gatherings. And everybody went and they met this man and they welcomed this man. And in the midst of that, a young man, he stood and he said, Ya Aba Qudama. And listen to this, Ikhwati Fillah. Qala Ya Aba Qudama. Akhbirna bi a'jaba ma ra'ayt. Tell us the most amazing thing that you ever experienced. Aba Qudama was a man who gave his life in Sabilillah. He moves from one land to another, from one area to another. He moves around just for to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, tell us the most amazing thing that you ever experienced. And Aba Qudama, he sat down and he leaned on the wall and he said, Inni mukhbirukum dali. I'll tell you that. And this is story that I will mention was reported or recorded by Ibn al Jawzi and Ibn Haz fi Masari al Usha. Yaqul, now listen to this. He said, I was traveling to Tarsus, and this is a border. A seat in the borderline between the Muslim and the non Muslim country. And he said, I went to a city called Raqqa in Iraq. And I went to the masjid and I encouraged everyone to give for the sake of Allah and to be on the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then I went. I rented a room. Now keep in mind, 
at that time when the Western, Western societies were living in their dark age, we had hotels. As Muslims, we had hotels and the person, a stranger, would come and just live and stay for a night and then pay the rent for the night. And in the middle of the night, someone is knocking on my door. I said to myself, who could that be? And I opened the door. A woman who was wearing a full niqab and hijab, she's standing outside of the door. And I turned, and I said to her without looking at her, Ya Amat Allah, may Allah have mercy on you. What are you doing here? And she said, Anta Aba Qudama? Are you Aba Qudama? I said, Yes. She said, Ya Aba Qudama, are you the man who encouraged us to spend for the sake of Allah? I said, Yes. She said, This is what I can do. And she gave me a sad and turned and she cried. I was so shocked with this woman. Why would she do this? And I opened this act. And in it is a letter saying, Ya Aba Qudama, you encourage us to spend money for the sake of Allah. I have nothing. I'm just a weak woman. I, can, I cannot afford to give you anything. However, I gave you Zafiratayah. I cut my hair and I gave it to you in the sand. Tie on your horse. And when you're traveling for the sake of Allah, Allah an yandur ila shaari. Maybe Allah will look at my hair and He will say, I forgave her for that. I was shocked what this lady did. I was so shocked. So I kept it. We pray Fajr and we move on. Just before we pass the palace of Masnab bin Abdul Malik, Faida bi Faris, a knight or a writer, Yaqulu ya Aba Qudama, Qif alayya rahir hamakallah. Ya Aba Qudama, wait. And this, this man, he is so running so fast towards me. So I say to my companions, you proceed, I'll deal with this young man. And this man, means he covered his face, he jumped out of the horse and is panting and he's saying, Alhamdulillah, ya Aba Qudama, who allow me to see you before you leave. Alhamdulillah, I caught up with you. Please take me with you. And I said to him, Remove this out of your face. For in kunta sabiyan radadnak, wa in kunta rajulan akhadnak. If you are just a kid, we will send you back home. And if you are a man, you will come with us. He said he removed. فَإِذَا بِشَاب مِثْلَ لَيْلَةِ مِثْلَ قَمَرْ لَيْلَةِ الْبَرْ A young boy with the face as radiant with Iman. قُلْتُ يَا غُلَامْ اذهب إلى أمك. I say, young boy, go back to your mother. Go home. قال, أما علمت أمي? Don't you know my mother? Don't you know the lady who gave you the sack? I said, what lady? He said, the lady who came to you last night. I said, what for? He said, she came to see you. That is my mother. ما أسرع ما نسيت. You're quick to forget things here about Qudama. That lady who came to you is my mother. And she dressed me up. And she hugged me. And she said, Ya Allah, this is my gift to you. Ya Allah, accept it for me. And he said, before I say anything, he said, Ya Aba Qudama, as'aluka billah, don't send me back home. For wallahi inni la rajul. Wallahi, I'm a man. Inni hafidun li kitabillah. I memorized the book of Allah. See, ya ikhwati fillah. 
See the standard of those people. He did not say, I have a degree in engineering, or I'm a medical doctor, or I have this or that. He said, I am a hafid li kitabillah. I memorized the book of Allah. There is no status after that. لِأَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولْ غَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ And the day that we disrespect Dishonor people who are hufal li kitabillah. That is the day that we destroy this deen. The day when a young boy he says he says to us, I don't want to be a hafiz. I don't want to be a qari. Look what they do. Look, they live with the minimum wage. Look what the kind of job that they do. I don't want to be like I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. That is the day that we destroy Al-Islam. And we do, we do an excellent job. We're doing a powerful job. We don't need enemies for this deen. We are the one who are destroying Islam because we're not honoring and respecting the people of Quran. And I'm talking about all Muslim world. If a doctor comes in, we they make him sit the best place we talk to him with respect, we honor him, and يَعْلَمُ Allah, And Allah knows that this man cannot even make proper wudu. But when Hafiz comes, or Qari li kitabi Allah, it's just a Sheikh so and so, or Mawlana so and so, or Qari so and so. La wallahi. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Anas bin Malik, he used to say, we used to receive the respect of the Messenger of Allah based on our Quran. And when one of us memorized Surah Al-Baqarah, he used to be the Amir of the Jama'ah. So this young man said, Ya Aba Qudama, don't send me back, for Wallahi, inni lahafdi li kitabillah. He said, I had no other choice but to take him with us. فَإِذَا رَكِبْنَا كَانَ أَسْرَعُنَا when we write, he's the fastest. When we walk, he's the most active. He said, and during all this, إِمَّا قَارِنُ تَالِنُ لِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ Either he's reciting the book of Allah, or he's doing a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until the end of the day. And then we all settled down, and some of the people said, We are fasting, we need breakfast, we need iftar. And this young boy jumped. He said, you need breakfast? You need iftar? I'll make you iftar. I said to the young boy, you also tired boy, sit down. He said, no, wallahi, I'm not fasting. I'll make you food for you. So we said to him, in kana la but, if this is what you have to do, فَبْعَدْ عَنَّا أَذَ الطَّعَامِ You know, go and cook far away so the food will not bother us. And then the time passed. And Salat al-Maghrib was almost there. And my companion said, go look at your boy and see what he's doing. The iftar is late. And I went and I saw this young boy prepare almost everything. Put the food and the pots cooking. And while he was waiting, he took this rock and he put under his head and he slept. يَقُولْ وَكَأَنَّ بِهِ مَسَّدْ malak. وَكَأَنَّ بِهِ أَسْتُوْ He's been touched by an angel. And then all of a sudden, while I'm looking, I'm looking at this beautiful, righteous face. He smiled. He smiled. And then I said, Wallahi, I'm not going to bother him. I'm just going to make the rest of the food. And when he felt me, he got up and said, Ya Abu Qudama, I'm sorry. I did not, I'm sorry. I let me finish. I said, no, 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 sit down, sit down. You know, you took your, you, you lost your chance. He said, no, Ya Abu Qudama, just give me one more chance. He said, no, khalas, you're done. You know, you, everybody's waiting for the food. You didn't prepare the food. Just stay where you are. He said, no, Ya Abu Qudama, Wallahi. I will. He said, under one condition, you tell me what were you smiling in your dream? And the face of that boy just dropped. And he said, Ya Aba Qudam, after he looked away, Da, fa inna bayni wa bayna rabbi. 
He said, Ya Abu Al-Qulam, leave it. Leave it. It is between me and my Lord. Between I and my Lord. Don't ask about it. I said, then no, no food for you. You're not going to make any iftar. You're not going to get the reward. Qala, Ya Abu Al-Qulam, da'aha. Leave Ya Abu Al-Qulam. He said, no, that's my condition. Qala, in kana la bud, listen to me. If I have to tell you, then listen. He said, I saw in my dream that Qiyamah started. And I'm dead. And the people are coming out of their graves. And people are flying out of their graves to Arasat al Qiyamah. And I went to Jannah paradise. And I went to my Jannah. And it's as beautiful as Allah had described and better in the Quran because we cannot imagine everything that Allah had described in our mind, minds. And He said, And I went to Jannah, my paradise. And I saw this Hur al Ain, so beautiful. Lawla anna Allah thabata alayya basari. La faqatta if it was not for Allah to keep my side on for me, me, I will, will be blind. And this Hur al Ain next to a river. A river they said to one another, to one another, look, this is the husband of Mardiyah. And I came and I approached one of the most beautiful ones and I said, are you Mardiyah? She said, no, I am the servant of Mardiyah. Would you like to see Mardiyah? He said, yes, please take me. She took me into this palace, a brick of gold, another silver, and the windows, the curtains made out of silk. And I walked in this beautiful palace. And there was this wonderful, huge, beautiful bed. The upper part is made out of gold. And the lace and the stands of the bed is made out of silver. And on it is mattress that is made out of silk. And on the mattress is this beautiful line. Marliya. And I said, are you Marliya? Welcome, all the wali of Allah, the friend of Allah. And I tried to touch her. فقالت, ya Habibi, May Allah protect you from imperfection. We will meet, inshallah, tomorrow after Salat al Dhuhr. Fa'alimta, he said, I will die today after Salat al dhuhr Abu Qudama said, I said to this young boy, boy, if you die, don't forget to intercede for me in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah li shafa'ah. He said, we went and we joined the group. Waltaqal jam'an. And everybody gathered around their brothers and friends and relatives. And I look around for the young boy and I could not find him. And I found him first in the line. And I grabbed him and said, son, do you have any experience? He said, no. He said, have you ever seen such a thing? He said, no. He said, then go back. And he looked at me and said, Anta, li hada? You telling me that? And Allah يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا لقيتم الذين كفروا زحفا فلا تولوهم الأدبار. Don't ever give your back to them. You asking me, you want me from the people of Jannah of Jahannam? He said, Well, I say, Ya Ulam, this is not the interpretation of the ayah. A young boy, not a alim. A young boy. He said, Why are we arguing? The war started. وارتفعت السيوف وقطفت الرؤوس وارتفع الغبار and then after everything was done the adhan for salat al-dhuhr was called and al-qara is saying alhamdulillah we are victorious and we said I said to my companions whoever left let us pray let us pray for salat let us pray al-dhuhr because salat is, is, salat is more important than anything, ya ikhwati fillah. 
نحن الذين إذا دعوا إذا دعوا لصلاتهم والحرب تسقي الأرض جاما أحمرا وجعلوا الوجوه للحجاز فكبروا في مسمع الروح الأمين فكبرا when the salah comes at it he said and I said to myself maybe they captured the young boy maybe he's dead I don't know let me just look for him and while I'm looking I heard a weak voice coming from behind يقول يا أيها الناس يا أيها الناس أدعوا لي أبا قدامة Find Aba Qudama for me. Find Aba Qudama for me. He said, when I saw that voice, I ran towards the voice. And I threw myself next to him. And I said, Ay Bunay, this is me, this is Aba Qudama. And he said, Subhanallah, the body of that little boy is being cut into pieces. Horses being run over this little boy. They run over him. Subhanallah. And he's bleeding all over. And then he smiled. فقال الحمد لله الذي أحياني الحمد لله هو الله أمي تلب أنت لا يصير حتى أوصي حتى حتى أوصي أنت لا give you my وصية he said والله I cried and I took the end of my thobe and he started wiping the blood from his face فقال لا يا أبا قدامة my my thobe is already bloody use my not yours don't ruin yours he said I cried more because how concerned this little boy is about others in that situation. He said, Aba Qudama, take my, if I die, take my soul and tell my mom, Allah has accepted her gift. And Aba Qudama, I have a sister who's nine years old. There's no time that I leave the house except that she cries. And there's no time that I walk into the house except that she's happy to see me. And last time when she saw me leaving, she said, Ya Akhi, don't live like dad and never come back. Come to us. Come back. Tell her, Allah Allah is the one who will protect you. And he said, يا أبا قدامة والله صدقة الرؤيا والله the dream came true يا أبا قدامة والله I can see مرضية right now والله she's standing over my I can smell her and he took a breath another breath and he died he died a kid 15, 16, 17 years old قال أبا قدامة the only concern I had is to go back to the city and inform his mother and his sister. And I came, Allah, not knowing the house of this lady. And I started walking through the streets of the city and I realized there's a little girl standing in front of one of the houses. And every time that she sees someone who came back from a trip, she will run. فَتَقُولُ يَا عَمَّا أَمَّعَكُمْ أَخِي Is my brother with you? And the man would say, I don't know who's your brother. And he would walk away. And the second person would do the same thing. And the third would do the same thing. And the fourth, until I approached her. فَقَالَتْ يَا عَمَّا أَمَّعَكُمْ أَخِي Is my brother with you? And her eyes just glue. I mean, glow out of, out, of, out of happiness because she thought I had news for her. And I said to her, call your mother. And the lady came and she saw me and she recognized my voice. فَقَالَتْ يَا أَبَا قُدَامَ أَجِئْتَ مُعَزِّيًا أَمْ مُبَشِّرًا You came here to give me my condolences or you came here to give me a good news. I said, what is it? How do you explain that? She said, if you tell me that Allah, if you came to tell me that Allah has accepted my gift, this is Bushra. But if you tell me my son is home, this is a ta'ziyah. This is a ta'ziyah. I said, no, Allah has accepted your gift. And the little girl, once he's looking at her mother, second he's looking at me, 
And when she realized her brother is not coming back, she took a breath and she died on the spot. And the mother grabbed her daughter by the hand, dragged her in the house, and she said, Allahumma lak alhamd. Allahumma lak alhamd for accepting my gift. Allahumma lak alhamd for taking what left for me. Allahumma lak alhamd for allowing me to be a Muslim. Now look at that young man. And look at that mother. Now, that is prime time. That is how we should use our time. I'm not asking you to, because the situation and the circumstances are completely different. But you can do something righteous, something useful for yourself, for your community, for your ummah. Here, you can help run the masajid. You can teach others. You can take care of these young people who are lost. You can create a youth group or be part of existing youth group and help the brothers and sisters who are away from Islam, who are involved with ma'asiyah and things. And do something while you can because wallahi tomorrow when you get married and when you have start having children and when your wife demands some of your time and your job demands some of your time and your children demand some of your time you will wish that if you are single or young again this is a prime time and this is what you should do and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the youth and he said in surah al-kahf innahum fityatun amanu bi rabbihim they were fitya they were young people who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah increased them in faith. Faith and amal. And Allah mentioned Ibrahim and he called him Fata. Who did this to our guards? And the response was Fata Ibrahim. Fata They said bring him bring him they were young and they did what they have to do at that age now what we can learn from the story because it's not just the nice story that we listen we learn from the story lessons number one as a young man you have to have a hadaf goal you have to you have to have a goal. What is your goal? What is your aim? If that is not clear, you will be just one, you will just waste your time, waste your effort, waste your life, and you will regret. When regret, we may not benefit. So you have to say, this, after this conference, I want to make schedule my time. I'm not rich, but the only wealth that I have is my time. That worth more than anything. More than anything. I want to utilize my time. After Salat al Fajr, this is my schedule. After Salat al Dhuhr, this is my schedule. After Salat al Asr, this is my schedule. This is the time that I will give to my parents. This is the time that I will give to my ilm. This is the time that I will give to my community. This is the time that I will earn something for myself. Atah bin Abi Rabah, a slave boy. When his master realized how keen this young boy is concerning his time, she freed him. Because what he used to do, he divided his time in three parts. One, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second, third, for his, his master. And the third, for his ilm, for his knowledge. And when that lady saw that, she said, this man, he is this young boy, he is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second, you have to believe that you can do this. You have to. If you don't have that tasdeeq, faith in yourself, you will not go far. You have to believe that this goal, can, I can accomplish this. You know, there's, there was a brother, mashallah, in, our, in Montreal, I'm sorry, in Toronto. He led the Salat al-Taraweeh for Ramadan. And when he led the Salat al-Taraweeh, people said, MashaAllah, because the Imam, the Masjid was 
a masjid that was fresh and there was no imam no and they said mashallah but he was leading from a mushaf they said come back and lead us next taraweeh in eight months he memorized the quran because from that moment he promised to himself by next Ramadan, I must be a Hafid, I better be a Hafid. I don't want to hold a Mus'haf and read from the Quran. La, I want to, and he accomplished. It's all about what you want to do. If you can accomplish this, if you, can, if you believe you can accomplish it, you will do it. Third, work towards it. Don't just wish. Don't say, I want to be a Hafid. I want to be a student of Ilm. I want to be an engineer. No, you got to take steps towards it. If you want to be a businessman and you just wish for business, it's not going to happen. If you have business and you want more clients, more customers to come to your business, sitting behind the cashier and wishing for more customers would not happen. It will not work. You have to take positive steps towards that and say, this is how I can accomplish this and this is what I can do. Fourth, ya ikhwati fillah, be patient with the difficulties and hardship that comes with that. Nothing is easy in this life. Don't assume just because you have that noble thought or noble inten intention or noble goal, just by sitting back and relaxing that you will be able to achieve, you will not be able to achieve much. So you, unless you have sabr. Allah Yaquli Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was become a sabara ulil azm. Be patient like the rest of the messengers. Have sabr. You are my messenger, then you have to have sabr. And this is what we need to do, Ya Ikhwati Fillah, to have that sabr. And then to help you go back to the life of the Sahaba. Look what Ali radiallahu anhu did as a young man. Study that the life of Mu'ad bin Jabal, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, appointing him to be the judge on a qadi of Al-Yaman when he was around 20 years old. Study the life of Usama bin Zayd, teenager, whom Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman were under him. And they said, Rasulullah said, you lead the army. Study his life. Study his biography. Aisha radiyallahu anha. Asma bint Abi Bakr al-Siddiq. Asma, a pregnant lady who would climb a mountain, climb up all the way to the top, give, taking or serving food or making food or delivering food to Rasulullah and Abu Bakr. And then coming down. And then tomorrow doing the same thing. See, now we are the cheesecake generation. That's all who we are. You know, we want a pizza hut, we want a cheeseburger, we want a Big Mac, we want a nice, you know, donut, we want coffee, chai latte with whipped cream on the top, you know, we want this. And then we say, how come Islam is not getting, Muslims are not getting better? You gotta struggle like they struggle. Sisters, they have to struggle like Asma radiallahu anha. Now, if sister, she's pregnant, she says, Oh my God, I'm three months, I cannot lift uh, uh, anything. And Asma is climbing up a mountain. Brothers, you say, oh, come and help. He said, Oh, don't you remember last Ramadan, I helped you with the parking lot. Yeah, this is Sha'ban. You've been off for 11 months. No, I did my... No. Unless we come. And we say, no, I'm going to go and work from, from the roots. Unless you say this, much thing would not happen. So I know my time is up. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا وَجُزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرُوا سَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم